when it comes to diet, um, it is something that we we do every day of our lives. Uh, and it's, it's a huge contributor in that we are putting things into our body that can either oppose inflammation or we can are putting things in our body that can actually lead to it or perpetuate inflammation. And we teach patients uh, an elimination diet where we want them to take out things that are leading to inflammation but also put things into the tank that are going to oppose it, they're going to fight inflammation or help the body to fight that inflammation or oppose that inflammation. Um, so the diet uh, being very key. Uh, inflammation is something that's really regulated through our body's immune system. So what we are really trying to do uh, is through working through the whole body is enable the immune system to regulate that inflammation. We do tell patients that inflammation is actually not bad. Inflammation is good. When you get the flu, your body uses inflammation to potentially save your life or to just you know, make you better. Um, inflammation is not the enemy, but when it runs too rampant, uh, we can develop the symptoms that we have and any of the symptoms that we have. What we're really trying to do is help your body to regulate that inflammation so that you have the right amount. So unfortunately, you know, here in the United States, most people are, you know, using the standard American diet or the SAD diet. And so, you know, the other thing that happens in this culture is that we go through fad diets. And this is not a fad diet, this is a lifestyle change. Um, and it's important to be able to walk through the different types of foods that are to be taken out of the diet that may cause, you know, an allergic reaction is what we all are easily able to identify. But what about the insensitivities or the intolerances that go through hours or, or throughout days that people may not be aware of um, and they're walking around not feeling well and this is you know causing further inflammation and further pain um, and so we go into really just you know a lot of detail about what specific foods we are encouraging them to add to their diet but also which ones are asking them to, to remove. I tell patients no-brainers are uh, processed and added sugars Soda pop, whether it's uh, you know artificially sweetened or uh, you know low no calorie soda or regular soda, and fast food, um, these things being just like they do not make sense. Um, where it gets more difficult and you have to really educate patients and we do teach them the biochemistry of why we want you to take this out uh, comes to dairy. Uh, taking dairy out, you're like, well, wait a minute, that has like calcium, it has protein, and they actually add a little bit of vitamin D in there. Uh, you have to do quite a bit of educating and, and, and talking you know, uh, about how dairy might need to come out, or gluten coming out, a protein structure that exists in wheat, barley, rye. Um, these kind of things have um, more difficulty, and when I say difficulty, it's really in uh, making a behavior change, which I might turn that information over to Dr. Cozio and his expertise. Um, some of the other things that we have our patients work with are meats, uh, and choosing uh, what kind of meats that the, the patient eats, and frequently we tell the patient it's not as much, uh, you know, whether meat itself is good or bad. I'm really more concerned about, I think meat is okay. What is the meat eating? before you ate the meat. <clears throat> I want you to think more about that because really good things can come from meat if you choose to eat meat. Uh, another example might be in fats. We are taught that uh, fats have are, are been our enemy uh, since the 50s or the 60s where low fat diets were really brought into, uh, uh, into the, the fray and cholesterol was like one of the public enemy number one. We're learning more and more that maybe fats play a, an important role in our lives. I mean, a majority percentage of our brain is actually made out of fat. All the cells of our body actually need it to perform its function. Um, that doesn't sound like fat is bad to me. That sounds like fat actually is really good. We just have to choose what chemical structure of that fat we're putting into our body. It's not the same for everybody, but um, we want you know, to figure out what is right for the body. And we try to help patients and guide them on that, which again, tough behavior change for many people. One thing that I want to 
kind of make it clear that it's not one standard diet and one size does not necessarily yeah. fit all. We have some guidelines and some things that we, we recommend, but each person's biochemistry is different, their genetic code is different. And so we do need to personalize some of this information for each individual. So you might be asking, why is there a, a, an osteopath and a psychologist talking about diet? Um, and it's because it's that important experimental nature of what we're doing in functional medicine, but also the behavior change that comes along. So some things that providers can do in their clinic is creating an awareness. You know, asking patients, what exactly does your diet look like? Um, you know, talking to them about their lifestyle, the, the things that they can change in their lifestyle. Um, and then starting that discussion, right? And then giving the time and the energy to those areas that maybe we take for granted.